Being born in dirt, eating the food that dirt yields, and returning to Mother Earth buried in dirt is the cycle of life. Wheat, barley, and rice all sprout from dirt. All our livestock frolic in the dirt, and so it seems reasonable to think that our food mostly originates from dirt. Counterintuitively, 70% of all human-consumed protein actually comes from the sea. This is why so many cities and villages settled on the coast and plundered the sea for easy food throughout history. The North European civilizations in particular were obsessed over fish as if their lives quite literally depended on it because their land was too cold and infertile for any meaningful farming. To get anywhere near a balanced diet, they needed to trade their fish for wheat. There's this desolate North European island in the middle of the Atlantic that started its civilization in a particularly harsh region. Stuck on a tiny island with laughably infertile dirt, the survival of Iceland rested solely on the slimy backs of fish. They would do anything to protect their fish. Let's set sail for the Cod Wars! The funniest wars I've ever seen. <laughs> Europeans love cods and herrings. Cods, in particular, are delicious and exceptionally nutritious because they could weigh up to a stunning 96 kilograms or 211 pounds. Only a few natural predators the size of whales or sharks could even attempt to put a dent in their infinitely multiplying population. Even before refrigeration technology, their impressively low fat content made them remarkably easy to dry out and preserve through fish jerky. With such a mind-blowing spec sheet, cods seem to have been created solely for human consumption and were praised as the wheat of the sea. Iceland, an island nation located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, built its entire economy around exporting cods while under the rule of Denmark after Danish Vikings settled there in the medieval era. Even up until the modern era, its only notable industry was fishing and exporting the seemingly unlimited cods that merciful Odin blessed them with. Overfishing is a relatively modern concept. Europeans didn't dare think of the simple question. What happens when our cod-based economy runs out of cod? Back in the day, cod was such a plentiful source of food that it was about as reliable as knowledge raiders producing gorgeous, addictingly high-quality content. Why the hell would that ever change? The Industrial Revolution, that's why! The Industrial Revolution caused the manufacturing industry to boom beyond anything previously imaginable. The agricultural industry, not having been impacted by this new technology as much, was left in the dust by comparison. So, the poor peasant farmers ditched their pitchforks and flocked to the cities in search for a better peasant job and a better peasant life. All these peasants that previously farmed the land and ate their own food were now expecting to be magically fed by the cities, factories, and mines. Britain the forerunner of the Industrial Revolution, faced this unprecedented supply chain crisis first. Urbanization led to an explosive growth in demand for cod. I'm sure you've heard of fish and chips. Well, that's literally fried cod, hastily mass-produced for the consumption of the peasant factory workers. Sounds like a good idea, right? Well, it was such a good idea that everybody started doing that. Such a good idea, in fact, that there was literally not enough cod in the sea to keep up. Hold on, what? The ocean was mankind's favorite all-you-can-eat cod buffet for close to millennium. Surely the shrinking number of cod was a simple counting error. The British swept this minor concern under the rug and fished to their heart's content, hoping the sky won't fall. They fished and fished and fished until there was no more cod around the English island. It was at this moment they realized they fucked up. But what the hell, this is Britain we're talking about. As far as Britain was concerned, they owned all the oceans of the world. Sure, they might have overfished cod to extinction in their immediate vicinity, but it's a brave new world, and there's still plenty of cod left to ravage. The English fishing boats, backed by the full force of the strongest navy of its time, went out into the Atlantic Ocean and cheerfully looted the cod supply of their neighboring countries without a care in the world. Other cod-loving European countries joined in and helpfully contributed to overfishing the entire Atlantic. Iceland's waters are now flooded with unwelcome foreign fishing boats engaging in an irresponsible overfishing party in their front yard. The most egregious offender is Britain, showing about the same amount of respect for sovereign territory as a stray dog peeing on your infant child. 
Denmark, ruling over Iceland at the time, files an official complaint to Britain and demands... Stay out of my territory. Specifically, Britain must stay at least 50 nautical miles away from any Icelandic soil, including the Faroe Islands. Britain politely responds and tells Denmark to... Fuck off! Britain instead doubles down and overfishes up to three nautical miles from the Icelandic coast, deliberately antagonizing the living hell out of Denmark. Three nautical miles is about 5.5 kilometers or 3.4 regular miles. This is not an arbitrary number. Because a coastal cannon has a range of three nautical miles, the European countries had an unwritten rule of considering waters up to three nautical miles from a country's coast as its unquestionable territory, as a final frontier of basic respect for a sovereign nation. After all, a sufficiently pissed off nation could suddenly rain cannon fire upon any boats within that range. As a final slap in the face, Britain cucks Iceland and loots their cod even within those three nautical miles anyway, double daring Denmark to do something about it. In 1944, right before the end of World War II, Iceland finally becomes independent from Danish rule and declares itself a sovereign nation. Now that Hitler and the Danish are off Iceland's back, it is now time to deal with the parasitic British. Britain and the other European countries are in shambles from the consequences of having a world war waged on their territory. Farmland was eviscerated, the European economy went to shit, and there just isn't enough food for all the surviving shell-shocked citizens. Britain chooses to use massive amounts of cod to mitigate its food crisis. America, the now unrivaled world superpower, signs the Truman Proclamation on the Continental Shelf into action in 1945. Previously, the concept of sovereign territory was iffy at best. Now, Truman is officially declaring everything between the coast and the edge of the Continental Shelf as U.S. territory. How convenient for America. Other world countries start making their own bootlegged proclamations about continental shelves, arbitrarily claiming territory left and right. Iceland seizes this opportunity to claim some territory for itself as well. It doesn't want to stay in this laughably one-sided deal of three nautical miles that Britain peer pressured it into. Iceland believes that it's entitled to 12 nautical miles. See, in the brutal aftermath of World War II, the surrounding countries came to understand the potential consequences of pissing off a nation to no end and respected Iceland's wishes. Britain, in classic British fashion, merrily tells Iceland to fuck off and sends their fishing boats into Icelandic waters as if the past few years never happened. In fact, the British government even has the audacity to call bullshit on Iceland's declaration of nautical territory and escort its endless fishing boats with actual gunships. Iceland finally had enough of this disrespect. Despite the fact that their navy was mostly patrol boats, it decided to pick a fight anyway with the aircraft carrier wielding strongest navy in the world. Yes, you heard that correctly. The tiny Icelandic patrol boat fired upon the British fishing boats and openly challenged the mighty Royal Navy in an attempt to intimidate them into backing off. This is how Cod War I starts. There aren't mass casualties, but Iceland really means business here. Their cod-based economy is literally going to die if they allow the British to continue overfishing Icelandic waters. Iceland is snapping at the British like a cornered rabid dog with nothing to lose. Having to place armed soldiers on the individual fishing boats to fend off the savage Icelandic patrol boats was really more hassle than it was worth for the British. After three stubborn years, Britain decides to reluctantly formally recognize waters up to 12 nautical miles from the coast as Icelandic territory on the condition that future conflicts be resolved through the International Court of Justice. Iceland gladly accepts this offer and promises to never go back on its word. Ten years later, Iceland goes back on its word. In 1972, the new Icelandic government declares that their territory extends up to 50 nautical miles from the coast instead. Britain paid no attention to the yappings of Iceland, like usual, and tells its fishermen to go about their day like normal. This time, though, Britain didn't go as far to escort them with gunships. You see, unlike 10 years ago, this is the middle of the Cold War. The free world needs to work together to stop the spread of communism. Nothing would make the communists happier than Britain murdering off one of its few precious allies for something as trivial as cod. Of course, Iceland means business this time around as well. Its tiny patrol boats are relentlessly harassing the English fishing boats and cutting their nets. 
Britain can't ignore this anymore because its citizens just won't shut up about their poor vandalized nets. Thus, they make the decision to escort their fishing boats with gunships once more. Iceland, unable to understand the concept of diversifying assets, still has an economy that more or less runs on COD. They decide to use their final trump card. Iceland threatens to sever diplomatic ties with Britain if Britain dares to send gunships again. Doubling down, Iceland also threatens to even quit NATO. All this just because of some fucking fish. NATO, scared shitless, hastily intervenes and orders Britain to chill out. Britain, once again, reluctantly backs down and accepts Iceland's demands of recognizing waters up to 50 nautical miles from its coast as Icelandic territory and fish up to a limit of 130,000 tons of cod. In October of 1973, Iceland emerges victorious from Cod War II. Just one year later in 1974, the oil crisis turns the European economy into a train wreck. Iceland's economy is also facing a severe economic crisis. What do you think their solution is? Take a wild guess. Yup, more cod. Iceland says fuck it and decides to shamelessly extend its borders once again. In 1975, Iceland declares waters up to 200 nautical miles from its coast as Icelandic territory. Britain was still bitter about being forced to accept Iceland's blatant disregard for promises. Iceland already went back on its word and extended its borders from 12 nautical miles to 50, which was humiliating enough. Iceland then having the audacity to extend its borders from 50 nautical miles to 200 makes Britain question reality. Britain sends gunships right away. Cod War 3 starts just two years after Cod War 2. Britain is having a difficult time figuring out what an appropriate level of retaliation to the outrageously provocative Iceland would be. On one hand, the strongest navy in the world firing missiles at the practically defenseless country would generate as much international condemnation as Logan Paul punting the ever-living fuck out of a stray dog over his roof for nibbling on a Pokemon sticker. On the other, Iceland can't keep getting away with this. The brilliant idea was to play a game of chicken and kamikaze into each other, daring the other party to fire first. Fantastic idea! Such a genius idea, in fact, that civilian and military boats from both Britain and Iceland are just ramming into each other like crazy, doing as much damage to each other as humanly possible without escalating to the use of gunpowder. What a sight to see in the era of nuclear weapons. Iceland plays its super effective trump card again. It threatens to cut diplomatic ties with Britain and quit NATO. This time, it even goes as far as threatening to purchase high-speed gunships from America to fight off the Royal Navy. After all, America would surely stand on Iceland's side and tell Britain to chill out for the greater good of winning the Cold War. In a shocking turn of events, America, the country that donated weapons to the Taliban, very uncharacteristically refuses to sell weapons to a willing buyer. Iceland is in big trouble. The trump card didn't work, and it looks like Iceland is about to get cod-cucked once more. Remember how these guys have Viking blood pumping through their veins? They would rather torch the goddamn casino to the ground than lose this round. Iceland, this absolute mad lad, goes to the Soviet Union for help. Iceland is going to single-handedly undo the decades of meticulous political maneuvering and the unimaginable investments for the Iron Curtain because they want their damn fish! Panic isn't strong enough of a word to describe the situation. North America and Western Europe are horrified and completely losing their minds. Iceland, a country placed in a strategically advantageous region in the middle of the Atlantic, is about to quit NATO and arm itself with Soviet weapons. Let that sink in. Everybody's still traumatized from the Cuban Missile Crisis and the terrifyingly tangible reality of a nuclear apocalypse. Oh, this can't be happening. Britain just gave birth to a world where the Soviets can comfortably cruise around the Atlantic with their nukes. Oh, this had to be stopped at all costs. Hold on, let me get this straight. The hill you chose to get nuked on is fucking fish and chips? Just import your damn fish from Iceland, you greedy imperial! America and the European countries hastily condemned Britain as a simple dispute over fish started spiraling out of control. NATO got involved again and desperately tried to mediate before things became truly irreversible. Britain isn't backing down that easily. The British are still looting cod near the Icelandic coast as the apocalypse looms over them. 
On February 18th, 1976, another violent boat collision between the two countries happens. This time, Iceland actually carries out its threat to sever diplomatic ties with Britain. This is a game of chicken with world-changing consequences between a country that only has COD and one that has everything but COD. There's no way that Britain could win the moral high ground here. With NATO's increasingly hysterical shrieks of desperation piercing through the free world, Britain had no choice but to stand down yet again. Iceland restored diplomatic ties with Britain with a smug grin on its face at a conference in Oslo, Norway. Britain agreed to only send 24 ships per year within 200 nautical miles of the Icelandic coast and could catch only up to 50,000 tons of cod per year. Having to worry about other countries stealing its already concerningly shrinking cod population through the cod wars was enough for Iceland to learn the basic economic lesson of diversification. It's time to finally make some long-awaited change. Iceland actively invested in its manufacturing and finance industry, utilized its abundant geothermal power from active volcanoes to develop its aluminum industry, and its beautiful natural wonders to develop its tourism industry. These tactics work pretty well, and Iceland is now finally diversified as a country. Of course, cod will always be its first love and most important industry. With overfishing in the Atlantic more of a crisis than ever, Iceland is not going to lose the cod that they risked everything to protect from those heartless imperials. Iceland actively micromanages its fishing quotas and vigilantly monitors the cod population. We're going to end this video with a wholesome reminder that no natural resource, especially not fish, is infinite. Also, don't fuck with the descendants of actual Vikings. This has been David Bradford from Knowledge Raiders, and thank you for watching.